Think we should go back? Yeah, I think that's probably best. Hmm? Hey, Seven, what's up? Oh, well... Is, is that a medicine bottle? I got curious about it. Here. Ethylene diamine tartrate? Yeah, that's right. CDT. What kind of medicine is that? It's not medicine. I think it's an industrial strength detergent. Why would they have something like that here? Well, probably to clean stuff up. Clean what up? Fuck if I know. Still, it looks like it's cleaned my brain up. You remember something? Yeah. Well, I remember a story about EDT. Happened about 50 years ago. There was this factory somewhere in America making big old EDT crystals. <laughs> they were making it to sell as an industrial strength cleaner, like I told you before. But, a year after the factory started up, Something strange started happening with the crystals they were building. Water molecules started attaching themselves to the EDT crystals. This made them into a sort of mutation of the original crystals, called a hydrate. Once the crystals turned into a hydrate, though, it's useless as a cleaner. The factory had to just dump the crystals. It's a hydrate, they were useless. But it didn't end there. After that day, the same thing started happening in EDT factories everywhere, even ones nowhere near that first American factory. They'd been making crystals the same way, with the same materials and the same equipment and environment. But now, all of a sudden, every single crystal they formed turned into a hydrate. In fact, ever since that day, no factory anywhere has been able to make a pure EDT crystal. Even an EDT research done years before, they'd never gotten a hydrate. But 
after it happened at the first factory, it just... spread. It was like... man, how do you say it? Like the molecules were communicating with one another. Transmitting information in a way humans couldn't perceive. This phenomena spread throughout the world, right? Yeah, that's... that's it exactly. But... how did you know? I heard another story, uh, kinda like that one. When? In the freezer. What? The freezer? Yeah, June told me. Hmm. Ice that doesn't melt at room temperature, huh? That sounds familiar? Yeah, hold up. I, I feel like I can remember something. It's right there. Do you? Do you know about Ice Nine? Ice Nine? Ice Nine. Ice Nine. Ice, ice, ice. That's it. I remember now. That woman, she's on this boat. That woman? Alice! Who's Alice? Come on, the woman who won't melt at room temperature! Huh? You know how the Titanic sank on April 15, 1912, right? Yeah, more than 1,500 people died. Worst maritime accident in history. What about it? Did you hear about the boat that was sent to collect the dead bodies? Uh, I think that was the RMS Carpathia, right? It was a cruise liner, just like the Titanic. No, that was the ship that picked up the survivors. The ship that collected the dead bodies was the C.S. McKay Bennett. The McKay Bennett showed up on April 17th, two days after the accident. It set out from Halifax, a port in Canada, and recovered 306 bodies. The Atlantic that far north was really cold. It would have to be for there to be icebergs and stuff. Anyway, the bodies they pulled out of the water were frozen solid. This isn't a very nice story. So, what happened next? Well, they say the McKay Bennett recovered something more than just dead bodies. There were various bits of stuff floating around in the water. Things the drowned had carried with them, or stuff that dislodged as the ship sank. One of the things they found was a coffin. A coffin? Yeah, a wooden one. The craftsman who made it must have been pretty skilled. It wasn't just a wooden coffin. It was all wood, no nails, no reinforcements, no gaps in the wood anywhere. The thing was airtight. The crew got pretty curious about what might be inside it and opened it up. I had to get a wedge and hammer it open and so well made. Inside. They found a woman. Or, I guess you should say, they found the dead body of a woman. Her hair was thick and black and her skin rich brown with no blemishes or signs of decomposition. say that she looked gorgeous, like a goddess. She was obviously dead, but everyone who looked at her said she just looked like she was sleeping. Her skin was so lifelike, she looked like she might wake up any minute. And she didn't, though. Like the rest of the bodies they found, she was frozen solid. Eventually, the McKay Bennett finished searching and returned to Halifax. The 306 bodies were unloaded and taken ashore. However, it was warm enough that they began to thaw. As 
say that the stink was horrible. But there was one body that did thaw. And that was... The girl in the coffin. That's right. Everybody thought for sure that she'd melt and start to rot like the rest of them eventually. But weeks passed and nothing happened. Then a month passed, and another. It was summer, and she was still frozen solid. After a while, people started to say she was some sort of miracle. Rumors about her started to spread. People came to visit Halifax from all over. After a while, people started to call her All Ice. Alice. Of course, those rumors didn't last long. Why? Well, she up and disappeared. One day Alice was there, the next day she wasn't. They say someone snuck into where they were keeping her and stole the body. With the body gone, the rumors followed pretty quickly. After a while, no one remembered her. You might be able to find something about her if you could find a newspaper from back then, but that's about it. Wait, you just said that she was on this boat. Yeah, I did. Alice has got to be somewhere on this ship. Now why the hell would you say something like that? Because I know. And just what is it you know? What happened to Alice after she was stolen? Alright, tell me. What happened to Alice? Well, around that time the word was that there was a special black market in New York. All millionaires from all over the world. I've heard that Alice went up for auction there. The person who won the auction was... Lord Dashiell Gordain. You've heard that name before, right? Lord Gordain. Oh, isn't he the guy who bought the Gigantic? The Titanic sister ship? Yeah, that's him. Although I guess he hadn't done that yet. What do you mean? Gordain bought Alice in 1912. Four years later, in 1916, he bought the Gigantic. And he hit Alice somewhere on the Gigantic. But nobody knows where. He died in 1931. And apparently, he died without ever telling anyone where Alice was hidden. However... However... what? Well, he did have one close friend who asked him, Where is Alice? And he said, Alice sleeps in a small chamber past the forest of knowledge beneath the navel of the gigantic. What the hell is that? Is it some kind of riddle? Your guess is as good as mine. So that's it. Whatever you think, I believe it. She's hidden somewhere on the Gigantic. In other words, she's hidden somewhere on this ship. Hmm. Hey! What are you two doing over there? Stop wasting time and get over here! Okay, okay, we're coming. Jeez! Yeah, so, anyway, that's the story. It might be useful someday. Don't forget it. Alice. Huh. That mummy, that mummy wasn't, wasn't just, just a normal, a normal mummy. mummy. They say that she was frozen. The story says that from the time of its discovery all the way through to when it got put on the Titanic. Even though it was carried through the desert, her body never melted. Then was that Egyptian priestess, Alice? Did the water in her body become Ice Nine? 
No, that, that's nuts. There's no way somebody like that could exist.
Hey, hold on. Oh, uh, what's up? Where's Clover? Huh? Oh, god damn it. Where the hell did she go? Ah, uh, okay. J just hold on a minute. I'll go get her. Sure thing. Hey, Clover. What's wrong? Come on. Let's get out of here. What are you doing? Did you want to come back here and say goodbye to John? Hey, Clover, can you hear me? My brother might be dead. Uh, huh? That's why we couldn't find him. If he's dead, I'm going to be next. What, what are you talking about? What's wrong with you? Uh, uh. Oh yeah. It's in my pocket somewhere. Um, ah, here it is. A four-leaf clover. Hey, did you know? Each leaf means something. Hope? Faith, love, and luck. That's what a four-leaf clover stands for. Take it. Use it as a good luck charm. Listen to me, Clover. No matter what happens, you can never lose hope. You have to remember what's most important, and that's to have faith and to have love. If you can remember all of those, that'll bring you good luck. Snake, I mean, your brother, he's not dead. He's alive, somewhere, I'm sure of it. You've just gotta believe in that. Thank you. Thank you. Now come on, Seven's waiting for us at the exit. Wait. Before we go, there's one thing I want to ask you. What's that? 
What do you think when you hear the word experiment? Uh, what? Oh. Huh. I guess it was just a coincidence then. I mean, that you knew about the four-leaf clover. Uh, look, I'm, I'm sorry. Uh, I, I don't want to be a jerk, but you are making less than no sense right now. Oh, no, no, no. It's nothing. Just forget about it. Oh, don't, don't give me that. Uh, you really think I could just drop this? What is this experiment you were talking about? You promise you won't tell anyone? Cross my heart. Really? Really. I can trust you, right? Of course you can. Okay, then. I'll tell you. I'll tell you what happened on this ship nine years ago. Wait, wait, wait. On this ship? Yeah, this ship. It was an experiment to test some sort of psychic thing. Communicating through these fields that you can't see. Fields that you can't see? Like, think about this. This is John, right? But is he really John? Huh? Isn't this like Locke's socks? Or the ship of Theseus? Um... You don't know? You haven't heard of those paradoxes? No? Really? Okay, well pay attention then. This is how Locke's socks works. Let's say I've got a pair of socks. They're my favorite socks. One of them gets a hole in it. What would you do if that was your sock, Junpei? Well, I'd pitch it, I guess. But it's your favorite pair of socks! Come on, who loves their socks that much? It doesn't matter. Just suppose you do love them that much. Hmm. Well, uh, I guess then I'd patch it. But what if another hole opens? I'd add another patch, I suppose. What if another hole opened after that? Um, another patch, I guess? Well, let's say you just keep adding new patches. Until eventually, the original cloth of the sock is totally gone. Once you get to that point, can you really say they're the same socks you started with? Hmm. Uh, well, that, that's, oh, that, that's tough. So, that's the lock socks thing? Yeah, the ship of Theseus is a lot like it. The ship of Theseus. If you keep fixing the damaged parts of a ship, eventually it ends up with none of the parts it started with. Can you really say that ship is the same one you started with? And what if you took all the old parts from the first ship and built another one somewhere else? Then which ship is the real ship of Theseus? The one you repaired or the one you built with all the original parts? Hmm. Hey, do you think it's the same? What's the same? These guys. Is this John, or is it Lucy now? Uh... John's head and heart are both his. But apart from those, and a single arm, the rest of his body was once Lucy's. We're just like these mannequins. Think about it. The cells in our body change every day. Old ones die and new ones are born. Maybe part of my arm is made of stuff from a fish I ate once. 
Or maybe part of your right side is made from a cow you ate. If you take it a little further, those cows and fishes are made from something else too, right? That's how we're all connected. Through fields that can't be seen with the naked eye. Hey, what the hell has taken you two so long? How long are you going to make me wait? We don't have time to screw around. Uh. Uh. Oh? What were you two doing? Was this some sort of secret meeting? No, it wasn't. We were just... Just... Playing with the mannequins. Huh? Let's go, Junpei. Playing with mannequins, huh? Didn't know you were into that kind of thing, Junpei. <sighs> You're a dick. All right, I'm going to open it now. Is that cool? You don't need to keep asking, just do it, all right? <sighs> Fine then. <sighs> all right, let's get going. Hey, man, what's up with you? You're so serious, you know? Can't you sound more happy, you know, get a little excited? <sighs> <sighs> Not really. <sighs> My brother might be dead. I'm going to be next. Like hell I can. Not after hearing something like that. <sighs> 